Hey Trader, Steve here from Jackrabbit Trader and welcome to the Jackrabbit Club. In this video, we're going to take a look at our portfolio for Saturday, September 21st, 2019. First of all, before we get started, I want to welcome all our new uh, club members. So thanks for taking advantage of the open enrollment we just went through. If you're not a member and you want to be considered for be a member, uh, please sign up at jackrabbittrader.com slash membership and we'll reach out the next time we have our next open enrollment. With that said, if you're not a member and you're watching this video, please know you're getting this about 30 to 45 days after it's been released to members. So same thing, if you wanna unlock those real-time updates, head on over to jackrabbittrader.com slash membership and sign up for a future membership. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description box below. So, this week was uh, a little frustrating, you know, similar to last week. As you can see, we had some uh, a continued pullback in our portfolio. Went from 10.54% down to 10.09 for the year, uh, while the S&P went from 21.5 to 20.4. So the S&P pulled back about a percent. We pulled back half a percent. Uh, but, you know, again, between the last two weeks, it's kind of felt like one of those stuck in the mud uh, type of scenarios where the market continues to go and we are not really participating and part of that is from you know the, the trades that we're in and as we go through this rotation that we talked about last week um, but we're going to go through our portfolio first uh, we'll look at the market cycles and see if anything has changed um, we're still keeping us as a bullish rating is the market cycle but uh, technically it's you know bullish to slightly bullish uh, because it looks like we broke the eight day on the SPY. So let's hunt it over, look at the market cycles first. So for new members, uh, what this is, is this is the way that I try to stay in sync with the market. And I use uh, the eight and 21 day exponential moving averages as guides, um, not indicators, just guides. And we chart it with the SPY and anytime we're above or below the 21 day moving average that changes the market cycle so when we're above the 21 day moving average it's a green market cycle risk on scenario when we're below the 21 day moving average it's a risk off scenario and a red market cycle you could see we've gone through a couple of those in the last year red market cycle you know we're looking then to take risk off hedge the portfolio green market cycle looking to put risk on and when we get into the situations where we're above you know the 21 day which is in blue but below the eight day which is in white which is where we are today then it's kind of a you know we still want to go you know in, in the direction of the market cycle we're still a green market cycle but it's something that we just want to take caution with so right now you know we are in that situation below the eight day above the 21 day so we're still going to look to add risk but we're going to do it cautiously and potentially you know wait and see maybe we'll add a hedge early in the week if we continue to get a breakdown of uh, continue from friday's move and we break down below the 21 day so if we take a look at the spy itself from a technical standpoint right we just looked at it from a market cycle standpoint uh, so looking at the daily chart i'm gonna make my screen a little brighter here there we go. So uh, when we look at this from a technical perspective, right, we're, we're touching the all time highs, right? 302 was the all time high. We tried to break above it twice, once last week or actually twice last week and once this week. Both times have failed. So it's something to take notice of, right? We talk about support and resistance. Uh, a big resistance level right now in the SPY is this 302. It is very possible that we pull back to 294, test what was previous resistance, maybe becomes new support, build in this range here between 302 and 294 before breaking out further, right? That's an option. Second option, as I discussed in the Jackrabbit Club is, you know, do we look at this as a potential double top scenario and then maybe come all the way back down to 282? Very possible. All right, so we're in a difficult spot here as far as technical, from a technical perspective. 
Um, and it's really wait and see. Friday, there was a late afternoon tweet or whatever news event. It was also options expiration. It is what it is, right? And there's a lot of different reasons that we, you know, this could happen. But I'm not crazy that we broke below the, the 300 level and held there. All right. Similar to the market cycle, not crazy that we broke below the eight day and didn't get back above it. All right. So I want to proceed with some caution this week. I want to make sure that we are adding risk, but doing so in the areas that we want to add risk in. So to do that, I want to take a look at our sectors uh, a little further before we get into our actual positions. And again, for new members, this is our sector chart or watch list I would call it and what this is the first column is the percent change for the week the second column here is the percent change for the month and we have all the SPY sectors all nine of them plus the SPY and what this allows us to do is sort by percent change and we could see that in the last week the XLU so the utilities the XLB the materials the XLE energy the xlv which is healthcare i believe yes healthcare and the xlf all outperform the spy okay so those are the sectors that we want to concentrate on now if we look at it over the last month again the xlu the xlf the xle and the xli all outperform the spy that was up 1.59 percent over the last 30 days down 0.66 for the last seven all right and if you look here, you know, a lot of the outperformance in the in the XLV, the healthcare names, you know, that came from this past week. So if you look at those charts and we'll look at them on a weekly perspective, because that's really what we're we're concentrating on here, except for when we hedge. You know, if we look at the XLU, it's been on a run. Right. So XLU is usually a a uh, sector that traders will go to for some safety. Right. It's high paying dividends. Um, you know, stocks don't usually move that much. They pay high dividends. The XLF, you know, kind of in a range here. Clear this. All right. And kind of bumping its head on this 28 and a half level, you know, and, and rejecting from it. The XLE we talked about last week, right? We talked about this, you know, in one of our potential trades. I think it was OKE. OKE looked great from a uh, trading perspective broke out was looking good and then when we look at the XLE we said well you know what is this really where we want to be putting our money in this to me almost seemed like it was a spot where you know we were coming up and almost looked like it wanted to reverse sure enough we gapped higher this week with a little news I think uh, you know some of the I shouldn't say some a good portion of the oil supply was destroyed um, so oil prices shot up xle shot up and then spent the rest of the week moving lower all right xli you know similar situation kind of just in a range over the last remove those drawings you know in a range over the last uh you know year or so looks like it broke out actually last week but then right back into that range so um, you know, just understand we want to pay attention to those those names. And as we go through our, our potential trades for this week, we'll look at, you know, which ones meet the bill, which ones do we want to get in because they're outperforming um, and, you know, go from there. But first, let's look at our exact uh, trades that we're in and then uh, we can justify and kind of formulate a plan for how we want to go through the week. All right, so for, again, for the new members, uh, what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go through our existing positions. They're sorted here in alphabetical order, and you could also see the percent open, or I'm sorry, the profit and loss open for each trade. You can also see that if you head on over to the members page, click on the view the current portfolio, you'll see the same exact thing. Now, the one caveat I will have is that the spreadsheet is not, all of the accounts I trade, uh, I have certain accounts that are for my family, other accounts for other families, um, and what is in the spreadsheet is just for my family. It's just the way I keep track of it. Needless to say, it's the same trades across all different accounts. So 
uh, whether you're looking at this one or that, it's still the same trades, still the same entries, still the same exits. It's just that the profit and loss may not jive. But if you look at this, you can see we have a 1600, actually we'll look over here. We have a $1,615 open loss at this point. And right now for the month of September, we're down $1,100. So this is our first losing month so far. We don't have a lot of time. We got about 10 days left or nine days left in the month. Um, so unless we see a, a miraculous breakout from the SPY and the market this week uh, and a portion of next week, I would say that we're looking towards our first losing month in the portfolio for the year. So uh, it is what it is, part of trading, right? So let's go through our trades, see if there's anything that we need to do. And then we'll look at a couple new trades. And I know for a fact, I wanna add at least two trades and we'll go over those as well. So Adobe, all right, so the premise here, again, new members, what we're looking to do, and, and I sent you, um, you should have the weekly trading process e-course in PDF format. But we, basically what we're looking to do is we're buying weekly breakouts or pullbacks and managing them accordingly. So for Adobe, for instance, we bought this and actually let me turn on my trade so you can see them. So we bought this 21 shares at $300 and it's always bought on the following Monday of you know, the, the trigger bar. So on this case, if we zoom in here, this was the trigger bar, right? The breakout, the market closed for the week. And then the following Monday, we set our orders in, they trigger at the open, and that's why the order shows in for the following bar, all right? And you'll see that on our exits and our entries. And that's one of the ways that we go about being able to trade without being involved in the market from a day-to-day -day perspective. Right? We do a lot of our, our entries and exits at night or uh, over the weekend with the exception of our hedges that are more of a daily or intraday trade. And they are few and far between and really only happen when we are below that 21 day exponential moving average and become in a red market cycle. So it'll all start to make sense. If you have any questions, obviously let me know. But here in Adobe, we took a trade it was consolidating finally broke out took that trade all right came up a little bit and now we are pulling back and we're using this 270 area as support now why are we using that as support because that is where the support from this consolidation was right you could see that it tried to break below that 270 level of many points couldn't do it broke out instead so we have yet to have the opportunity to trail a stop uh, in this one. So right now Adobe down uh, $467 on that trade. AME, all right, again, broke out, took it on the following Monday and really marked the highs, right? And then we pulled back, now breaking up to towards the highs again. So let's see if we can get back over 92, but our stop is all the way down here at 81, 85, and we're just gonna let the position work until it triggers. Comcast, okay? So Comcast, here's one where we had the opportunity to trail our position, or our stop, I should say. So Comcast was moving sideways, finally on this bar right here. Let's see if this will highlight. So on that bar right there, broke out above this 4350 level, okay? and then really did nothing, right? It just really went sideways and set up another consolidation where we have this sideways movement in the stock and then broke out again right here, all right? So when we get a secondary breakout, we look to see the number one, where we wanna trail our stop to, all right? So we were able to trail our stop from 41 up to this 42.15 and then we look at the opportunity to potentially add to the position. In this case, we did not add to it, all right? If we added, you would have seen another green bubble uh, because we had enough risk on at the point, at that point, based on position size and account size. And we'll go over that as we get to those um, in the future, and I'll actually show you uh, how we calculate our positions in the uh, at the end of this video when we add on our two new trades. But Comcast, uh, up 284, not really doing much. Uh, uh, Costco again 
just a simple breakout. You can see a couple other trades that I had in Costco where we took some profits. Now we had another breakout and really it's just failing and it hasn't done much since. So this is what I continue to say, right? The last two weeks, the market was up. Our, our stocks are, are trending lower, which is uh, you know a little frustrating. CSX, now this is a new position we just added this week. And this is one that we are looking at a uh, a pullback trade and that's pullback that pullback is to this trend line all right so we was a, were able to draw this trend line in all right along three points so you have actually let's use this so you had one point here you had another point right here and you had another third point in here and basically it was three touches of that trend line which now allow us to draw the trend line and now after we touched it we had this breakout to the upside so we use that breakout as an indication that potentially the stock wants to start making its way and working its way back up to the 86 level if we're wrong we're gonna be know we're wrong when we break below 64 and that's this little support area in here and it's also a break of the trend line now the stock could easily go to 60 and bounce all right where you see we've had a point of resistance a point of support all right and then maybe it comes back down into here okay so that's a possibility right we don't know uh, when we get in these trades if they're gonna work or not all we're trying to do is manage risk and stay in sync with the market to give ourselves the opportunity to make some money all right so CSX down already on the trade from just last week two hundred thirty four dollars Hilton again another pullback trade where it was breaking and pulling back along this trend line broke back above that trend line we used that opportunity to get add some additional shares so originally our trade uh, triggered here back in 617 all right got in that trade and then we had this very organized pullback broke out again and then sized our position again to uh, take advantage of potentially a move back to hundred dollars info all right this is as clean as it gets. This is basically our go-to setup. So if you've been getting the trade alerts, you should see that this is my go-to setup. Uh, but essentially, stock's moving sideways, it breaks out, and that's our trigger to get long. So we're long info at 68.49, trading now 67.49, or 67.36, I apologize, down $129. Here is JPM. Okay, so got along some JPM, JP Morgan, wanted to add some financials last week uh, and did so. All right, nice wide stop all the way down here at 105. You have a trend line in place. We've broken above the all time highs here, uh, right around the 118 level. So we're looking for this thing to run a little bit and, you know, it may have to rest after this move from 105 to 118. Maybe it wants to rest a little bit before breaking out, but our stop down at 105 will be our trigger to get out. MDLZ, all right, this is, you know, one that you usually don't want to see, um, but we had this nice tight consolidation, had a breakout, got long the following week at 56.71, and it traded straight down since, um, trying to bounce this week, but anything under 53.60, a close below 53.60. Now, remember, we're trading weekly charts, so we have to wait till Friday of next week which will be the 27th on that case if we're below this level then we're going to be out of the trade come the following monday realty income group here we had a breakout a failure and now this week moving back up to the highs so uh, this one actually looks like maybe it's got some legs that it can continue to go but here was that very wide consolidation wide consolidations wide areas usually mean uh, small positions for us because our stop is so far away so our stop down here at 6750 and again I leave all of my trades on here so you could see exactly how I traded this in the past right so we took it from 84 we added uh, I'm sorry we took 84 at 67 we added at 71 came up pulled back started making its way back up took some off at 72 came down back up took the rest off at 72 and then we wait right and then we waited for it to finally get a breakout and we took those off in this case in this area because we knew it was some type of resistance right so you know again we're about taking a lot of small profits that's the goal here 
and we're not looking for home runs we're just looking to continually consistently be able to put some money in our account so right now O is actually performing uh, up $21 uh, Pepsi here we go right breakout and since pulled back stop 127.84 RTN, all right, with the news of the uh, the airstrike or whatever that happened. Uh, again, I'm not a big news guy, but uh, the defense names propped up. Uh, we are looking, I have an alert out here at the 207 area. You know, probably got a little cute with it. Maybe should have taken some money off. But ultimately, that is my first line of resistance. The second line of resistance is 228. So when we get up to this 207 area, I'm probably going to take half of my position off and let the rest work, right? And then when we get up, if we get up to 228, I'll take the remainder of the position off. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to get there. doesn't mean that I'm going to wait exactly to 228, but it's the way that I'm going to manage my risk, okay? And that's basically, in reality, probably should have taken the uh, half a position off on this pop uh, here. But didn't hit the alert and when it does I will let you guys know that we're going to be taking some of that money off but just understand that when we have these types of pullback trades and there's overhead resistance we are going to use those overhead resistance levels as areas targets that we want to take some profits okay so 207 would be the first one in RTN up to 25 on that trade SNPS again broke out pulled back almost immediately tried to bounce this week didn't get it uh, but here we have a stop at 125.80. STI, another financial from last week. You could see our overhead resistance here around 73, 73. And here, you know, again, broke out. Nice wide stop all the way down at 59. If we can get up to 73, take some of the money off. If not, let's see if it can set up a new consolidation and a breakout, and then we'll revisit it there. And last but not least, Visa, which has been uh, honestly, you know, uh, a disappointment since we've kind of got in it. Um, and you can see I had a trade on before, took some small profits, had a new breakout in Visa, and has since rejected. And even this week, you know, pulling back. But line in the sand for me is this 170.80, and or I'm sorry, 171.80. And if we can get and close below that, then I'll obviously take that off for a profit. So. For the new members, obviously, if you're joining us right now, I wouldn't look to go ahead and add all of these positions. I would just wait, watch how we pro go through the process, watch, um, you know, how we're managing our trades, and honestly, you know, just let it sit. You know, there's no the market's always there. Just get you get comfortable, and this is how we go about our weekend process. This is why it's on video. Uh, there's a lot of information in here. And, you know, maybe if you want to, as we start maybe adding to a position, then then you can look to put that on and kind of go through that process of just use our new trades as, you know, paper trading options. OK. Um, and with that said, there are four trades that I'm looking at this week. So what I do every weekend is I go into my scan and I load and this is all these settings again should be in your uh, in the weekly trading process uh, e-course but what I do is I load my scan for my weekly setups and basically what that's saying is any stock that is over ten dollars well first of all it's any stock that's in the S&P 500 that's over ten dollars that has a close higher than the high from the one bar ago right so we want it to be either breaking out or, or a pullback trade has some volume to it and also has to close above the 40 day and the 10 day I'm sorry the 40 week and the 10 week moving averages all right so that just gives us stocks that are trending higher that are actually doing something significant by breaking out above the previous week's high so when we run that scan we get 36 trades I go through those that's what I send out um, in the weekly trades uh, in the Jackrabbit report I send out the, the the ones that fit my criteria for trades. And with that, this week, I sent out four trades. AEE, -E -E ALL, D, and DHR. And well, AAE and D, I'm not going to take. All right, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I usually don't trade the utilities. Nothing wrong with them. 
Obviously, you could build an entire portfolio, but the performance from a utility is really from the yield. I don't know if you guys could hear that. I don't know what that is. It's like the it's like the uh, the car horn from uh, the Avengers. Um, so a lot of the performance is from the yield. Now, obviously, this one is done very well, but you can see here that you know we're going from seventy three to seventy nine. You know the move is. You know, went from 56 to 78. So nothing wrong with the move. Nothing wrong with the, the name. Uh, it's just my preference that I usually don't put utilities on unless it's in a high yield type of portfolio. But here you can see AAE is exactly what we're looking for. Right. It's moving sideways, moving sideways. Boom. Right. We got a breakout. And now we're able to define our stop at the 75 level and see what happens. Right. You put the trade on. As long as it stays above that level, you just manage it accordingly. Same with D. Okay, this one went sideways, 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 broke out. All right, and now trading right up against the 81 level. All right, so that's first resistance, second resistance, 85. So I would not be taking this regardless of what trade it was because it's sitting right against the resistance level. All right, and there's times to know when to trade, and times to know not to trade. This is a trade that you just got to say pass. If it's going to go, it's going to go without me because it's not, you know, conducive to my process. It's sitting right at resistance right now. Okay. The two I do want to trade are ALL and DHR. And I'm going to go through why and how we are, we're going to size those right now. All right. So the first one is ALL and that's a financial. And if you remember from earlier today, when we sorted the, um, the sectors by performance and we went to the performance over the last 30 days the xlf has a uh, percent return of about 3.01 percent the spy has a 1.59 percent now the xlf if you look at it from a technical perspective is sitting right against this 28 and a half level all right and it also has some support down here at 25 or 26. so it's very possible that this may run a rollover and come lower okay but considering that it's outperformed over the last six or our 30 days all right we want to look to be in the stocks that are outperforming so all all right was trending higher right consolidated since the beginning of june right sideways 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 finally breaks out here all right so the truck the stock right now is trading 107.92 it's over the all-time high of this 105, all right? And now we can identify a support level right around 101, all right? And that's the bottom of this consolidation, which is supporting. So in order to figure out how many shares we want to buy, I have a little position calculator, and you guys can create one yourself. Uh, or you, if I, if you're interested, I can definitely email you this. But this is in uh, Google Sheets, so I don't know how that really works. But we can figure it out. Anyway, um, what was the stock? A L L. All right, so we're gonna put the stock symbol in. It's gonna generate the current price, 107.92, and we're gonna figure out and we're gonna tell it what the stop price is. From there, it adjusts the stop by one percent. So it gives me a one percent cushion because. Again, I'm not really trading and I'm not really selling the stock if it were to break my stop level until the end of the week. So this is the cushion for any further slippage. All right, I wanna risk half a percent of my account, okay? And my position size in this scenario is $7,653. So I'm risking $562 and it tells me that I need to buy 71 shares of AAL and to risk half a percent and I always risk half a percent of my account so half a percent of my account if you had ten thousand dollar account half a percent is fifty bucks right one percent would be a hundred bucks smaller account sizes you may want to go up in um, you know your percentage risk I would not go past two percent that would be my personal preference my feeling is I'd rather have a bunch of small positions on than four or five large positions um, that really take up a, a large portion of my money. So AAL or ALL, um, we're going to be buying 71 shares of that. The other trade is DHR, which is a healthcare. And again, if you take a look at the healthcare, 
over the last week it's up about half a percent while the market was down about half a percent and over the last 30 days it has been uh trailing but setting up you know with maybe the potential for a move to the upside and a break of this downtrend line dhr is a healthcare name you can see this is one that we've traded before but essentially consolidating breaking out and our stop is the 135 level all right so again we go back to that position calculator put in dhr bring up the price 146.47 135 is the stop okay and then half a percent risk this is how much my position size is going to be and then it's 44 shares risking the same 560 dollars and it's very important that you keep the risk on every single trade the same all right within a few dollars obviously but you know this is not hey i really like the way this stock is setting up i'm going to double my risk on this no 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 this is just methodical same amount of risk every single trade and see which ones work and which ones don't all right so i'm going to be adding um this to the account and when we do that we're going to go ahead we're going to put in at least in thinkorswim it's pretty easy put in 44 shares and click the buy market button all right so that then is going to send the order which is going to sit there i'm doing this video on saturday september 21st it'll sit there all day sunday and then come 9 30 monday morning when i'm at work doing everything else i need to do the orders just trigger and we enter the position okay and same thing would be for if we were exiting position or adding to a position same exact thing and when we get to those we'll obviously show those on video um and you know we'll look to add those to the portfolio now before i go i want to just bring your attention back to one thing and that thing is that we are below the eight day exponential moving average so it is very possible this week if we continue lower that we may look to hedge the portfolio now in the past we've done it very simply by buying put options on the SPY and if you look at the weekly you know it looks like maybe a good time to be doing it I would like to probably see a close below or a move below last week's low so reddit resistance maybe you look to put some put positions on take it to the downside so that's one way all right and these are I haven't gone over the other two but I want you to just be aware of them in case I change it up a little bit get a little crazy the other way is through the VXX okay and the VXX monitors volatility and basically adjusts option prices. So when volatility rises, option prices get more expensive. The same puts that I may be able to buy now, let's take a look real quick. If we go to the trade tab and we look at the SPY and we go out about 50 days. All right, so here, 297 puts I can get you know, for six bucks each, okay? And that's not bad. But if volatility rises, these same puts that I can get at six may be worth eight or nine. Okay, and that's one of the reasons that buying put positions really works because the volatility spikes and the option price not only gains from the move in the underlying, but also because volatility increases, making them more expensive. With that, and I, this is, I'll be honest, this is a, probably a little bit more technical than I wanted to get, but we can also look to buy calls on the vxx so you can buy puts on the spy thinking the spy is going to go down when the spy goes down the vxx goes up okay and when the vxx goes up that means you want to buy calls on the vxx i know it's a little confusing you could straight up buy the vxx all right it's only 23 bucks you could buy the vxx right now uh with some you know just as a uh, as another stock Okay, it's basically an ETF and you would set a stop here. And the reason I'm looking at the VXX is because you can see that it's been in a downtrend, right? Came down, tested this 21 level, bounced up, went back and forth while we were in a red market cycle, then pulled back again. And now look at the spike that we had on Friday. Okay, we haven't had this kind of spike in the VXX. So I'm very inclined to put throw a few put position or I'm sorry, call positions on in the VXX because again if we go over to the trade tab the calls in the VXX 
are trading at two bucks. So protection here is very cheap. For I could basically hedge my most of my account for a few hundred dollars. All right. So that's option number two. All right. So you could buy the VXX or you could buy call options on the VXX. Option number three is the SDS. And the SDS is an inverse fund for the SPY. Okay. So again, if you were to look and take the SPY and flip it on its, you know, mirror it so it's upside down, you would basically get the SDS. And look at what you have here on the SDS. All right, you have this 2895 level acting as some pretty significant support, right? Again, you had one touch, two touches, and it really touched all of uh, last week. Same thing. You could look to, I wouldn't look to buy calls. I, I'm pretty sure you can, but I wouldn't do it. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't know if there's enough open interest. And see, the spreads are like really wide here. Um, so I definitely would not be looking to buy calls on the SDS, but you could, if you're not comfortable, th this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give you options to still protect your portfolio by not shorting in the same sense of the, of the term, right? We're still buying, just as any other stock, it's just doing the inverse, all right? And so here, just as you could buy the VXX, I could, I could put an order out and say, I wanna buy 100 shares of the SDS. All right, and you buy the shares and you have a stop here below 28 and you see if it can get up, you know, into this 32 area, you know, maybe make a few hundred bucks. My personal preference is either to short the SPY or to buy the VXX either through stock, you know, through shares, I should say, or through calls. And the one reason I'm, I'm very inclined to do it through calls, and this is one of the reasons I love Thinkorswim too. So if we were to buy, you know, one November uh, 23 call, all right? And we go to analyze, you can analyze this here, analyze the trade, all right? So we're long one call, one November 23 call, which means that as the VXX goes up, the SPY most likely goes down, all right? So you are hedging your portfolio. And if we look at the VXX, you can see that this thing can move, okay? so. The highs here were 30. So we could, you know, in perfect scenario, we could go to 25 or we can go to 30 or we can go to 28. But let's just say we go to 25, just a small bump in volatility. Go back to that analyze tab and we go to 25. And you can see that you change that here. All right, so those call positions that I bought at 292 made me $100, okay? I'm up 32% by a very small bump. Now look at the, you know, I mean, it went from 21 to 23 on Friday alone. Nothing to say I can't do it again. But let's say, take it one step further. Let's say you go to 28. All right, now you made $300. And let's say you go to 30. Let's say we really fall down hard. You know, you made $483, 165%. So, you're going to get more bang for your buck without putting a lot of money out in, uh, you know, in protection. Right now, when the VXX is low, protection is cheap. So, you know, like I said, let's see how Monday goes. Um, but it's very possible that we look at not only maybe shorting the SPY through put options. You know, that may not be the best option. No pun intended. You know, the, the best option may be, let's buy some calls on the VXX, okay? See what happens, all right? The, it's basically doing the same thing. It's just they have to be sized differently. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to overcomplicate it, then puts on the SPY are fine or buying the SDS also fine, okay? Either one of those works. Buying the VXX works, okay? But if you want to you know, maybe get, put a little bit less protection out there. You can also look at the VXX. So just trying to give you some options. Again, much more technical than I really wanted to get into. Um, but if you have questions, let me know. Other than that, we're done. All right. That we went through our portfolio. It's about, you know, I think we did this probably about a 35 minute video. And I basically went through the everything they need to do. And now I go and move on with 
everything else, hockey tournaments, hockey games, this and that. And uh, we'll see you, you know, during the week or if not next weekend. Other than that, have a great rest of the weekend. Uh, again, welcome to all the new members. If you like the video and you're watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and ring the notification bell. Other than that, have a great rest of the weekend. Take care, guys.